Any rebellion. Jesus of Nazareth, you are charged with blasphemy. Tell us, are you the Son of God? I am. Son of God is available to rent or own now, two weeks before Netflix or Redbox. Plus, check out the extended free preview before you order. Lone Survivor tells the remarkable true story of a team of Navy SEALs who...
serious enough. I think I might be on my way. I just um, got my own TV show. It's called All American Girl, and it's very. <laughs> agree on that name. You know, I wanted to be called the Margaret Cho Show because I'm such a fucking egomaniac <laughs> that I couldn't have it any other way. And they had their own suggestions. Um, East meets West. Walk on the wild side. W-O-K, walk. So I had a huge tantrum and said, fuck you, we're going to call it Chinkies. She would totally suck. <laughs> like, she could never do promos, you know. Ain't that even for home improvement? <laughs> she just sound crazy, so. So I'm really excited about it. I'm gearing up to do this whole thing on a diet. I've been on a diet for a long time. I, I initially went on it because I was in Tampa, Florida at the airport, and I was staying there. And an old man walks over to me and he says, Excuse me, but are you Japanese? No, I'm Korean. Oh, really? That's very interesting because I was looking at you and I knew that you were not Filipino. I have many Filipino friends and you do not look Filipino because you're very husky.
definitely is better. But I could not stop hearing that word for days afterwards. Zoft, exhaust. Everywhere I went, zoft, exhaust, exhaust. Even restaurants. Would you like something to start? A zoftic, perhaps? <laughs> a what? A soft drink. His name is Vinny. He sounds like his name is Vinny. He comes over and he's like, All right, okay, now we're going to do lunches. Let's go. which normally I don't really think I'm right for. Like, I could never sell douche because I do not look fresh at all. I... I'm the anti-fresh. I hate those commercials. Anyway, I got so mad one day because I was watching TV and in the morning I saw this woman and she was in a Monostat 7 commercial and that same day I saw the same woman in an Always Maxi Pad commercial and I'm like, look honey, I know way too much about your vagina. because I don't even use mine, so. Does anybody want it? You can put like books in it or something, I don't know. Use it like a planter. Uh, it's got an equalizer. I, I have not had sex in almost two years. And I think once you hit two years, you automatically get your virginity back. You get to start over. And I'm about to. What is wrong with me? I don't understand. I can I, I'm just going to have to trick somebody into doing it. Use trickery. I'm going to have to cover with leaves and hope somebody falls in. that everybody in 
show business, does drugs. She's like, oh, you cannot go to the club because they take the drugs. The people they take the cocaine. And then they take the D, what is it? The D, the L, the D, the D. Mom, it's LSD. blind intersection, she will sit there for a very long time and rant, they never will give you a chance! <laughs> so since I was about 10 years old, almost all of my friends have been gay men. And uh, my mother would give me phone messages from them when they would call me when I lived at home. Um, Scott called. Is he the gay? <laughs> well, God, Mom, I don't know if he's the gay. That's a lot of pressure to be the gay. All of that resting on one guy. He has to do the parade all by himself. I'm here. I'm queer. I guess I'm the only one. My parents are very conservative, but surprisingly gay positive. In the late 70s, we owned a bookstore in San Francisco on Polk Street, which then was a huge gay mecca. And my mother, for some reason, was in charge of the gay pornography section. So every day she'd walk over there. I don't know why we had this book. What up? no idea what an ass master is. Is it like a thigh master? I don't know. Is it a master of the ass? What's that master? The most harrowing experience I ever had with my mother was one time I to go see this movie with my friends, and she would not let me go with my friends. She had to come with me. So I had to go see The Wall with my mom. <laughs> Halfway through the movie, somebody actually passed her a joint. <laughs> what is this? I don't smoke. I don't know why they give this to me. That's so... I... I... <laughs> He's 20, and he used to be a surfer, but now he's a born-again Christian. <laughs> and he's constantly trying to convert me. It's so weird. He comes up to me, and he says, Margaret, Margaret, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? Then where are you going? I taught Sunday school for two years and I got fired. I abused my authority. I used to teach class like this. Okay, if one more person talks, everybody is going to hell. I used to 
to keep a list on the board of who was going to burn. We did nice things in Sunday school, like we used to send money to underprivileged children overseas, which is a great cause, but sometimes I couldn't help but feel emotionally manipulated by some of the literature they'd send us, so we'd send them more money. Just outrageous accounts of these poor children. Lu Chen lives in a village with her 35,000 brothers and sisters. They live in a cardboard box. Here she tells a tragic story of the poverty that she must endure every day. TV, sort of as a way out, and I watched it obsessively. My favorite show of all time has to be Charlie's Angels. <laughs> I don't think it should have been called Charlie's Angels, though. I think it should have been called, and then there's the hoe. <laughs> Let me explain. When there are three girls that are friends, there's always one sweet one, one smart one, amongst yourselves. <laughs> Which one are you? And I know there's a lot of Asians here, so it doesn't count if your last name is Ho, by the way. My hair was so feathered <laughs> that the back of my head looked like a butt. more feathered than Blair's on Facts of Life. I loved all those shows. I loved The Love Boat. I think that was the best night of television ever, The Love Boat Fantasy Island Saturday Night. And if you were really lucky, sometimes people from The Love Boat would go to Fantasy Island. That was almost too much. We used to play a drinking game called the Love Boat Drinking Game. And what you do is you pick a character at the beginning of the show, and every time that character came on screen, you would drink. You could always spot the alcoholics, because they're the ones going, I want to be the ship! <laughs> drinking was a big part of my teenage years. I used to take a thermos and go to my parents' liquor cabinet, open it up, and take out a little bit of alcohol from every bottle that was in there and fill it back up with water. So in the thermos, there was a really gross combination of Cutty Stark and Johnny Walker Red and Kahlua and beer. And uh, you would take that thermos to like the Night Ranger concert. <laughs> Sister Christian! make your best friend barf out their retainer. <laughs> That's like the worst thing that can happen to you, barfing out your retainer. Because you can see it coming out, it shoots out, kind of clattish to the ground, and the worst thing about it is you know they have to go back in your mouth. I was obsessed with Saturday morning cartoons. so sad because you knew it was all over when Soul Train came on. But Soul Train was a great show, as was American Bandstand and Dance Fever and the ultimate solid gold. I love all those shows because I love the music of the 80s. It was such an oh Mickey you're so fine time, you know. It was such an 8675309 time, and uh, my family never had any money then, so I couldn't buy records or tapes or anything, so I would uh, tape songs off the radio. I'm sure you did that before, right? Uh, except I didn't have a radio inside my tape deck, so I had to hold the radio up to the tape deck. Tapes, 
you can hear, I hear my mother screaming at me. Come on, Alina. the 80s, we will be listening to this music forever. In 50 years, we'll all be in some senior citizen center somewhere going, oh, put on Hungry Like the Wolf again. <laughs> and a terrible racial incident happened recently in uh, Manhattan, of all places. I, it was with a friend of mine, Japanese comic named Kevin Kanahoka, a really great guy, and we're walking down the street, and a group of teenagers ran up to us and started screaming, Fucking Chinos ruin everything! And uh, we were really upset at first because we weren't sure whether they were talking about us or the pants. Because <laughs> they could be either really racist or really fashion conscious, you know. You don't know. I was staying at a little bed and breakfast in Michigan and uh, they had a kitchen that I could use, and I was really excited because I never get to cook my own meals. So I went and bought all this food, and I brought it back, and I asked the woman there if she had anything I could cook with, and she says, oh, yeah, do you need a walk? <laughs> uh, yeah, and some thousand-year-old eggs if you've got them. <laughs> you stupid bitch, what do I look like? <laughs> Martin fucking yeah. is the biggest disadvantage to being Asian in America, but if I were to choose, I think the biggest advantage to being Asian in America is that if you're at an airport or a bar or something and somebody comes up and talks to you and you don't want to talk to them, you can just pretend you don't speak English. <laughs> oh no, I don't know. 